while it's running. Mm -hmm. Alright, but we'll unlock it. Yep, yep. And then feed this in this way using this thing. Well, you're going to move this guy, right? So it's somewhere over here, so you can guarantee you're going to touch it. Then you're going to turn the cross slide until it actually does touch while it's mm. running. You'll hear it. Shh. Then all you got to do is just back off and then take a nice, easy cut in. Just keep going in. And what's nice is we've got this nice little ridge here because obviously these guys are really, really, really hard. Against that, it'll just snap it right off, and we don't want to do that. So it'll just, we're going to feed right in and just stop when you get to there. And if you stop early, that's okay, it's no big deal. If you're ready to stop, just let go. And then we can evaluate, because again, this this will hold everything right where it is. You won't lose your cut or have a problem. We'll just come right in, stop at that edge, and you'll be good. Yeah, all you do is you feed in with this one just to, to the point you touch. Then your whole control is right here. You don't touch anything else. Hmm. Unless you need to feed in a little more. Now, this piece is a little out of round because... We were doing something with it in four jaw, and I didn't have it centered up. I was, we were just playing. Oh, and by the way, Chirpy showed me this. So I didn't see this in any manual, and I've been using this thing for about six or eight months, and I've talked to all sorts of people that have these. Nowhere, nowhere does it show you this. So this is very, very important. If, if for anything else, you're going to get 10 million clicks on this video just for this one tip. You can spin this. So when you're doing very precise cuts, you can set that to zero and say, oh, I want to go in 10 thou. Well, with I tried everything to make that turn. It wouldn't turn. So Chirpy helped set it up, and it's beautiful now. You usually use this one here to... Well, the camera can't see that. That's yeah. why I did this one. But, yeah. but all the big lathes have that same feature, and I just thought, you know, I tried everything to make that turn, and I couldn't, I couldn't. I said, well, I guess I just have to keep doing math in my head. So as I'm working, I'm adding and subtracting 30 and 10 and everything else, but nope. Usually you don't use this one because it is at an angle, so you have to, you can do the math and stuff because you have to figure out the sign and everything else, but it's easier just to use the cross light here. And you got to remember, if you're feeding in like ten thousandths, it's going to take ten thousandths deep cut, which is going to remove it from both sides. So you're going to have twenty thousandths. Hmm. Math. All right. Yep. So you just take... If you need to go in a certain distance, you take half of that and you feed it in hmm. to that. All right, so at this point, same deal. Um, you're going to use this guy for depth, your cross slide, not the top slide. You might want to back it out a little bit. Just there. Yep, so just to reiterate, so we've got that. So bring the whole carriage over. You can see when it touches because it will create a shiny line there. Hmm. Alrighty, okay, so ready so to fire red, up? Yep, so red guy, red guy first. Red guy. Yep, then that guy forward. Correct. Then move it over to line up. Yep. And then just move it in until it touches. Yep. Right there. So now you just want to go just a hair more. There you go. And then we're going to move the whole okay. pack it that way down to the end. Yep, there you go. And just go nice and slow and even. You can use two hands, yep. There is rust on it, so it's... And just like before, you can actually see the see the line as it's cutting through. Yeah, that's really cool. And like Kirby said, this this was slightly out of round, so that's why we did this nice light pass. So now take the whole carriage, slide it back. Alright. Okay, it's recording again. I do run into this issue with this camera a lot, but ah. new cameras aren't free, you know. I found the problem. Why it was making noise. The problem why it's making noise, I might need needle nose. Essentially, so I traveled here with this in the trunk of my car, and the motor pulley is actually the uh, the metal case. It uh, It's pressing against the motor pulley. So we just have to bend that out. Gears. Gears are fun. That's oh, what it yeah. should sound like. Nice. Cool. Brief intermission. We're all set. You can so see. it looks like we're cutting here. Yep. Because like Chirpy said, it's, it's, it's a little out of round. Because hmm. he had a he's got a four jaw, so he can adjust each one of these differently, and he can actually push this whole piece wherever he wants on the jaw. All so, right. So now we're good for yep. another. So, so we can keep going. Essentially, going. essentially we're just going to keep going until all the scale, this rust, whatever this schmutzy kind of whatever stuff is, is gone. With this again, we'll set that to zero, so you don't have to think, and we can just turn it to ten when we're ready. Alright, so we'll go 
On, forward. Yep. Turn the speed up here. Speed up. Get that back up, yep. Then turn in 10. So that's 20 thousandths all together. So you can feel the difference, how it's now yeah. pointing you a little more. Yeah, it's got some resistance to it. So now we're getting a nice, you can see it's getting shinier and shinier as we go. Which this is really nice. We're getting a lot of spiral chunks coming out. So we're, Ooh, cut, yeah. we're really starting to cut the metal. Uh, I'm gonna go in another 10. Sure, yep. Keep it nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. Alright. Alright. So let's turn that off and we'll see what we ended up with. So we're getting there. So you can still see it's still a little offset to us. We're missing that. Yeah. So the tool's actually riding right over top and not touching it. So the other thing that you might want to note, um, I'm not sure how well it'll show up in the video. But we're, we're, we're getting like a lots of spirals in here. And that's okay because, again, we're, we're rough cutting this down right now. We're just it trying to get it close to shape. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the work piece is actually unsupported. So as the work, the tool pushes everything in, it will deflect a little bit. And on the back side, the tool is scraping, which is creating the spiral. That's why it's... But we don't want to reposition because we have it at a specific depth. So that's okay to... Again, we're not at our finishing pass yet, so it's, it's mm. fine. Usually you'll use a center drill and drill a center hole in here, then put a center in the tailstock to support both ends so that it doesn't flex. That or you'll chuck it up real close to the jaws to do whatever you need to do. Hmm. Feed your tool another 10. Alrighty. Yeah, there's a lot more drag going time. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I use both hands on the wheel. Oh, that's a good then idea. You can, then you can make it nice and smooth as you're going. And this, this right here is why a lot of people use the lead screw. Then the machine just drives itself right through. Cool. Yep. These shavings here are silver. With carbide, you want them just to be a very light straw color or almost there. So what that does is it draws the heat out of the part that the, the chip is going to pull the heat away. Yeah. That's, that's hmm. kind of the idea. Otherwise, this thing will get pretty hot. But that's one of the reasons I keep lubing it. You know, a lot of people have told me they don't really use lubrication with, with carbide. You just run it fast, run it hard, but I'm doing it now so we can keep the part cool. You see all the hmm. little, the WD-40 is kind of um, evaporating off. off. Yeah. Hmm. Essentially, what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to swap onto this side a uh, round carbide. So we're going to go into my little box of goodies here. And you can see the difference in the, in the actual pieces just to give you a nice clear shot. So this is the one we're actually cutting with. And again, I don't remember the numbers. I think Chirpy said it was CC, the diamond one? CCMT. CCMT. Um, the round one is, is round. And what's kind of neat is if you were to focus in really hard, which I don't think you can with the camera, but you get really close to that, it's not a diamond. It actually has a round on the edge. And the pointier they are, in my opinion, they, they kind of leave a, a little worse finish, but that's because it's such a small piece coming in. You would actually have to move the carriage much slower to get that finish. By making it round, it's got such a wide cutting area, it doesn't, it doesn't leave as much of a spiral since it recuts itself over and over and over as it goes. The wider the radius on those things, the more power your lathe needs and the more rigid it needs to be. Since we're just taking a skim cut here, it doesn't really matter. So again, this is a, another Chirpy modified for me because this didn't didn't fit too well, and it was actually just amazing. He has a shaper, and we just whoosh, whoosh, and just kept cutting it off. This was originally almost that thick, yeah, about five eighths thick. So that's crazy. And that is hardened steel too. So yeah, and we got away with it again because this is such a small lathe. You don't want to modify your tool bits that way. They flex as they're cutting. They'll actually flex on you and cause that chatter that that we were talking about. But Again, this guy's so small, it, I just use it for skim cuts. It seems to uh, it seems to work out pretty well. So what I'm going to do now, because we're actually putting a different tool bit in, we'll back this off because it won't matter. You can see all the scale and junk that was all built up on there. I, I just brushed it off, but you can see it's now all in the brush and just all over this this like dark schmutz that's kind of looks like a paste. That was all that garbagey stuff that was on there mm. that we uh, we so 
nicely cleaned off. So we clean everything that we do because in machining these little spirals and stuff they'll sit on there and it'll actually twist your tool. So even if you got these, I don't know if it, it's, you guys can even see it, but there's these little itty bitty hairs of pieces like right there. Yeah, they show up. Yep. That little guy, it'll, it'll take this tool bit and it'll just, I'm exaggerating of course, but it'll just turn it. And you want all your angles and things to be very precise. You want these guys to cut. Make sure to wipe that off before you put it Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'm busy talking about how it needs to be clean. and But that's why we keep Chirpy here. He knows all this stuff and make sure to, to keep us keep us honest. So as you're kissing this, I want to show you a little bit how I would do it. Okay. We'll, we'll run this, but essentially, you're just going to come in just real careful. Just You're going to hear it. Just just stop. It's fine. You're kind of coming in and like... And, and reasonably so, you've never done it. This is this is not a criticism, it's a uh, okay. critique. Uh, easiest way to do this when you're trying to get a really fine touch, uh, grab a Sharpie marker and just draw on it. Ah, and yes, yes. That's a good oh. idea. Well, on Sharpie you, won't work yet. Sharpie, you're there. So same deal. Uh, it's not a Sharpie you care about, right? No. It's going to get eaten. All right. So just, just hold it against it and just go back and forth. There you go. And just color it. The Sharpie looks like it's dying anyway. Yep. So then, like what Chirpy's saying, uh, we're going to come in. This is back, fed back as far as it'll go. We just want to feed in until it just, just, just kisses it. You know the anticipation. When will it touch? There you go. Start to hear that just, just yeah. kissing it. And it created a line right in the middle of the sharp. Here. Yep, and it made a line right there. It took all that sharp off right there. So that's what we meant by kissing. Just, just to, just to touch it. So we always feed back. Good. Set our zero. You can't see it, but I turn this dial to zero without turning the handle. Set that to five. No, two and a half. Nope, two and a half. My mistake. All right, so I got to start over. Sure, if you wanted five in total, it's called backlash, right? That's what I'm fighting. That's why I got to start over like this. So now we're going to feed it to two and a half. Two. Just two. Just two. All right. Two little dots. Two thousands. Yep. And we just feed it in nice and slow. Just like that. Nice and slow. Okay. And then just nice and yeah. slow. Nice and easy. What the round will do is create a nice, shiny finish. Now normally I wouldn't keep cleaning that, but I want to keep it so people can see. Now as Trippy said, when you get to the end, we're going to stop. Don't pull the carriage back this time. Okay. And just kind of watch this edge as well, so you don't drive the tool into the jaws. Cool. I think we're good. Alright, snap. Turn it off, off. Flip off. that. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty shiny and yeah, smooth. That's really nice. So this is about the finish. This is a new tool for me, but I would usually get that finish after polishing it with uh, various compounds or sand, mm. you know, up to maybe, depending on how, how good I wanted the finish, I might take this to, say, five, 500, 800 grit, mm. and then um, hit it with some compound or something. But this tool bit just, it saves you hours of work with that nice round on there. That's really cool. So now to take this back, because we don't want to draw across, because if this tool touches anything, like Chirpy said, that flexes, and that's why when you draw it back, because it's not under load anymore, it kind of touches. Hmm. Yeah, you just we want to draw. One. We want to draw. Yep, draw the mm -hmm. entire cross slide back. There. And then you, you can know. just bring the whole thing out. Cool. The, and that's it. One thing to remember: these corners are very, very sharp. They will cut you. I got hmm. cuts all over my hands. So just take a file and break the edge. Hmm. Yes, I have a file. Make right sure here. you have a file with a hand. Yeah, yeah, no, on no, 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 not do that one, one because no, no, because what will happen is if you're doing this and you accidentally catch here, it shoves oh. right in your hand. Yes, it'll go that or in your gut from a drill press when one of them grabbed Ooh. across my hand. So it will. It will mess you up. Yeah. While we're showing things, there's a little continuity errors, but you can see the spirals. I don't know how well that's going to show up. One side's spiral, one side's not. Oh yeah, the chatter. Yeah. Yep, that's the chatter. The tool is just. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I mean, it's real small. You don't even notice it, but you can hear it. It'll whine. And this side, it was just a shh, just a slicing. So that's the difference there. That's as smooth as about a thousand grit sandpaper right there, on that thing. Cool. It definitely feels smooth. Yeah, it's about as smooth as glass. It feels like. Cool. I can't feel anything. This tool here is usually used on bigger lathes. When you go into a corner on a shaft or something for turning, you don't want sharp corners, otherwise mm. it creates a weak spot. If you feed in with this, it creates a radius. Oh, that's a good idea. So that it's a lot stronger. 
I hope the viewers are looking forward to a multi-part lathe video series. <laughs> that's about what I'm going to get out of this. So how is this going to, we're just going to turn it on? Yep, so and turn it on. Kinda... Yep, just, just, uh, yep, so, so I would move this more. Okay. And then just take it and just... Okay. And then uh, just carefully straddle, yep, and then just very light. Right there, that's all you need. Yep. Okay. Yep, red. Off. Then you can cool. see that... That just took it off. I do it a little more than that, but it's not like razor sharp anymore. Yeah. I mean, it won't kill you, but... It just took the blade off. Yep, exactly. And just to explain to the viewers about the toilet paper in the background that you now see. Yeah. That's there so we can clean the lathe. That's the, I, I saw that on... Um, I'm probably Zinadu. going to mispronounce it. Zinadu? Zinadu. Zinadu. He goes through all sorts of tech tips and stuff. I'm not, I'm not trying to completely plug him on Paul's channel, but just he has these great tech tips. That's where I learned a lot of my techniques until I got to Chirpy's workshop. And the, uh, the, the toilet paper, <laughs> you can see all this stuff. It's called Swarf. It's all full of oil, so it's just like sticking to everything. You just take a little bit of the TP. doesn't have to be too ply. But, you know, I care for my lathe, so got to be two-ply. <laughs> and it just cleans all that garbage right up, and it just sticks to it. So all the little shiny bits. Charmin. Yep. And make sure you put oil back on. Yep. So we just oil it again. I only have WD-40 here with me, but uh, you'd use 30-weight uh, SAE, non-detergent. And that's it. That's nice and ready to go. Bingo. So there, if you were, if you were wanting to learn how to use a lathe... I just learned how to sort of use a lathe, so that was fun. More to come, probably, once I get working on that thing. So we're going to get very precise up in here, give or take a bit. <laughs> Silly string! Away it goes! Quit being a jerk, weather. Oh, that's a lot more than I thought. <laughs> yeah, it comes off pretty fast. But... You might want to take your rings off. Yeah. Because if they get caught on, yeah, yeah. on the chuck or anything, it'll just pop your finger. And that's, that's a bad thing. Yeah, it'll get a little stringy like that. You don't want that. Hmm. That's what a chip breaker is used for on the inserts. My feet way back. Yep, you see how it got really splashy? That means you hit the end. So now, it, now you can take it back the other way. You can see you're getting really, really fine dust off. So it's just barely skimming on it. Toilet paper is a good uh, wipe down. Is it better than paper? Well, it's just very paper absorbent. Towel? Very absorbent. Because it picks up all the dust. That's all mm -hmm. aluminum. Like, you know they say don't breathe aluminum dust? That's what you were making. Oh, okay. So we don't want to breathe that. But... So what do you think? Fun? Yeah. But you can make anything you want.